for you. Thank you. We're praying God's blessings upon you. I appreciate it. Come on, let's put our hands together one more time. This is wonderful, even in the midst of the snow. Let us pray. Lord, you have brought us a mighty long way. You brought us through this pandemic. You brought us through financial hardship, good times, bad times, but you have shown yourself mighty. And we are so grateful for your goodness. We ask your rich blessings upon the Bell family and this beautiful house. So many people have volunteered to show their love and to for every nail that was nailed into every board, it was done in love. It was done in partnership. It was done in sacrifice. Bless all persons that contributed to this wonderful house. All the partners, all of the board members, all of our sponsors. Oh God, touch them in the name of Jesus. Bless Sister Bell, oh God. Bless her family. May this house be a house of refuge, of peace, and of love. This is the season of giving. And we thank you so much for giving her the dream of her life. Thank you. Bless the house in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
your service unto the Lord. Amen, amen. Well, brothers and sisters, I want to share with you from the word of God in the book of Luke chapter number two, verse number seven. Reverend Elamine read it in our hearing, and it talks about how Mary wrapped the babe in swaddling cloths and laid him in the manger because there was no room for them in the end. I want to speak to you for just a few moments from the thought, make room for him in order to register for the census and customary as customary they as well as others had to go to bethlehem so a lot of the different places where you could stay were filled up and they were poor they did not have a lot of money they were not wealthy not well off and so they had to find somewhere where she could give birth because when the labor pains happened and ladies you know this when the labor pains happen you know it's time when the water breaks happens you know that it's time and no matter where you are the baby could care less and so the baby is going to come out wherever you may be so here we find that joseph and mary are in a stable they're in a barn they're in a place where there is a manger the manger is a trough a feeding area for animals she didn't have nowhere else to place the baby except in this place and uh, the bible says uh, that uh, she had wrapped the babe with swaddling cloths and laid him there but i want to uh, call your attention to the last line of that verse in verse number seven uh, that there was no room for them in the end uh, I got a question Scott are you making room for Jesus this morning uh, I got a question Scott are you making room for the Lord uh, I got a question to the community are you making room for the Lord how you doing young man God bless you are you making room for the lord the story is told of two young little boys and uh, they had a junky room i'm telling you the room was tore up from the floor up everything was out of order there was clothes on the floor clothes on the windowsill there was uh empty water bottles there was trash and garbage all on the floor the older brother walks into the room and says listen boys y'all got to get this room together because daddy is on his way home and daddy has a blessing for you uh, but he can't give you the blessing because because you don't have no room to receive what daddy has for you. These young men got excited. They got excited over the fact that they was going to get a blessing. They got excited over the fact that daddy was going to come home with something in his hands for them. And so they began to scurry around and they started to say to themselves, we got to get this room cleaned up. They started to pick up some clothes. They tried to put some trash away and it got to the point that they got too tired. Come on, sir. It was too much trash, too much mess, too much clutter. They got to the point where they just lifted up their hands and said, you know what? I can't do this. I'm afraid, my brothers and sisters, that many Americans as well as Christians have lifted up their hands because there's too much clutter in their lives. Now, I said make room for him, right? But I'm not talking about a physical room. I'm talking about the room that's in your heart. We have allowed clutter to accumulate over time. Clutter such as bitterness. Clutter such as resentment. Clutter such as jealousy. Clutter such as fear. Clutter such as pain. Clutter. We have allowed the clutter to accumulate to the point where now we tried to clean it up, but we just lift up our hands and say, I can't handle it. It's just too much. Much. Did you know that fear is also clutter? Yeah. Fear. Yeah. For the Bible says in the book of Timothy uh, that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, of power, of a sound mind. Uh, fear and faith 
are not to be uh, brought together. <laughs> In other words, it's like oil and water. They two just simply don't mix. Uh, if you're going to have faith, then you can't have fear. If you're going to have fear, then you can't have faith. Uh, but many of us are fearful. Why? Listen, I get it because sometimes pastor gets a little fearful every now and then. Uh, when I open, when I turn on the news and I find uh, that uh, 300,000 people who have contracted the coronavirus are now dead. Uh, I get a little fearful when I see that 16 million people, Americans, uh, uh, have uh, contracted the virus. Uh, they either at home quarantining or they're at the hospital. I get a little fearful. Uh, every now and then, uh, fear uh, comes into my heart uh, when I look at the fact uh, that there are 10 million people without a job. Uh, 10 million people who are unemployed. Uh, that gives me a little bit of fear uh, because I don't want to be a part of that. 10 million. I don't want to be a part of that 300,000 that lost their lives. I don't want to be a part of the 16 million that have contracted the coronavirus. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh my Lord, I don't want to go out. If I'm by myself, I don't want to go out. I don't want to go into the public square. I don't want to hang out with folk because I'm afraid. But the devil is a liar. It ain't nothing but clutter because you got to trust God. You do hear what I said. Trust God and know that he's with you. Know that he loves you. Know that he'll stand with you. Say yeah. Lord have mercy. We got clutter in our hearts and we need to make room because as long as the clutter is there, ah, we can't make room for Jesus. One day I was driving my car and uh, I came across a church sign that said dysfunctional families are welcome. Listen, I almost shout right there. I almost pulled my car over and began to give God the glory. Because when I think about the fact uh, that I am a part of a dysfunctional family, uh, you are part of a dysfunctional family too. Don't look at me side eye. Uh, you better shame the devil. Uh, we all got dysfunction in our family. Uh, so listen, uh, I don't even need to talk about your family. Let me just talk about Jesus' family. Uh, you can find uh, just dysfunction in the family of Jesus when you look at the genealogy in chapter number one of the book of Matthew when you see that Jacob uh, he's in there he was a trickster that's dysfunction uh, you can see Rahab she was a prostitute uh, that's dysfunction uh, you can see David uh, who was a whoremonger and a murderer uh, that is dysfunction uh, you can see Abraham uh, who didn't believe God uh, when God told him he was going to bless him with his only son uh, that's dysfunction uh, if Jesus got dysfunction, uh, then guess what? You and I got dysfunction in our families. Uh, are you hear what I'm saying? Uh, but aren't you glad uh, that he loves uh, the dysfunctional family? Uh, watch this. Uh, look at what the scripture says. Uh, it says uh, that Jesus did not come uh, for those who are well, uh, but he came uh, for those who are sick. Uh, somebody say, yeah. Uh, give him a shout. Uh, if you're dysfunctional, huh? that means you might be sick. Huh? We may be sick huh? mentally. Huh? We may be sick huh? emotionally. Huh? We may be sick huh? spiritually. Huh? But aren't you glad huh? this morning huh? that we serve a God huh? who sent the Son, huh? who's a miracle worker, huh? who's a doctor, huh? who ain't never lost a patient? Huh? Say yeah, huh? say yeah, huh? say yeah. Whoa. Watch this now. Jesus, understand your clutter. Whoa. I came to give you some good news this morning. You got clutter. I got clutter. All God's children got clutter. You got mess. I got mess. All God's children got mess. You got issues. I got issues. All God's children has issues. But the good news is that Jesus ain't afraid of your mess. He ain't afraid of your issues. He's not afraid of your clutter. Say yeah. 
There's a passage of scripture in the book of Revelation, chapter number three, verse number 20. And it says, I stand at the door and knock. Anyone who hears my voice opens the door, I will come in and dine with him. The King James Version says, sup with him and he with me. That takes me back to the story that I shared with you in the beginning of my sermon. You see, the father finally came home. And when he walked up the stairs and he knocks on the door, his sons, those two little boys, they looked at each other and said, Daddy's here. I know that knock from anywhere. And they said, who it is? And he said, oh, it's your father. And they said, Daddy, we're not ready for you to come into our room. Daddy said, listen, I need you to open the door. The little boys, they began to open up the door reluctantly. They opened up the door slowly. They opened up the door to they really ain't want to open the door because it still was a mess but daddy said open the door and when they opened the door daddy saw the mess he saw the trash he saw the clutter he saw he saw the empty bottles he saw the the, the, the all kinds of crumbs and food that was on the floor the clothes that was on the windowsill as well as on the floor and the little boys began to cry the the little boys were embarrassed. The little boy said, I can't believe that I was not able to clean up this mess. They started to say to daddy, daddy, oh daddy, I know you got something for me, but I can't get it just yet because it's not clean. Daddy, I said, daddy, I said, Daddy looked at the boy and looked at the mess and said to them, yes, I got something for you and I can't give it until the mess is clean. But son, don't you be worried. Son, don't you be afraid. What I want you to do is ask me for some help. The problem is we don't know how to ask God for some help. He said, ask me for some help to help you clean your mess. I'll do the heavy lifting. I'll do the heavy moving. I'll clean you up from the inside out. Say yeah. Say yeah. Give him a shout. Give him a praise. Say hallelujah. Listen, I'm done, but I got to tell you this. When Jesus said, if I knock on your door and you allow me to come in, I'm not there to tell you what you need to clean up. Woo! I'm not there to tell you that you are no good. I'm not there to tell you that you're wrong for allowing all the clutter to accumulate. That's not what the text says. The text says that if you open the door, if you open the door of your heart, then I will come in and I will dine with you. I will have community with you. I will have fellowship with you. I will have a love relationship with you. I will have a meal with you. I just want to be in your presence you need to give god a shout right now you need to give god a praise right now the lord just want to be in your presence the lord just want to spend some time with you the lord just want to see you through say yeah say yeah give him a shout oh! in the name of the father son and blessed Holy Ghost. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Maybe there's somebody under the sound of my voice and you never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You can give me your hand, but give God your heart. Oh, he loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. 
This I know For the Bible tells me so Oh my brothers and sisters Salvation Has come today All you need to do is confess with your mouth And believe in your heart That Jesus Christ was raised from the dead For you If that's you, come on, come on Come on, get saved You don't know what tomorrow will bring You know, you don't know what next week will bring Why not get saved right now uh, Confess and believe uh, Jesus still saves uh, Jesus still heals uh, Jesus still makes a way Jesus still blesses uh, Jesus still performs miracles uh, Signs uh, and wonders uh, Come on and get saved If that's you, come on, come on I'll meet you right where you are Oh yeah I'm so glad I'm so glad that trouble don't last always Yeah We've been made Endure for a night Keep the faith It's gonna be alright Yeah Oh, 